Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm so excited because today is huge. Uh, but let me not get ahead of myself. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee and Headlines, our daily get together live here on Facebook every day of the week, Monday through Sunday, 1030 in the morning, where we examine comments, questions, ideas, headlines, suggestions, everything and anything we can get our hands on so that we can better connect with our city, Puerto Vallarta, with our country, Mexico, with our culture, with our life here in this city as a community of English-speaking locals. It is always a pleasure to get together with you guys. And it is always a pleasure to welcome new people that join us on a regular basis. If you are new, please let us know by writing the word new in your comment. And if there is something really awesome or important that you want to share during the broadcast, please do so by adding the letter Q at the beginning of your comment. That'll help us keep an eye on it. So here we are. It's Tuesday, March 23rd, and I am excited about today. We have a ton of news, uh, good and bad, whatever. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, some useless information, and why not? We have Luna hanging out. How are you, baby? She's keeping track of you guys, making sure that you're in your best behavior. And last but not least, I've been itching to get to today because we start our weekly um, weight gaining commitment <laughs> of exploring local taquerias, taco stands, places where we can enjoy good tacos. We'll get to that in the second half of the program. But first, let's take a quick look at who's in the house. Um, let's see, Portland's in the house. Good morning, Karen. Um, another Karen, but from Minnesota. How are you doing? Dave is hungry. And this is a good thing because I'm going to try to make you hungrier as we are discussing our tacos. Boston's in the house. Hello, David. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um, uh, oh, no. Paula fell out of the loop after just a few days. Well, oh, I feel out of the loop after just a few days. Well, you know, we're always here. Feel free to ask us all kinds of questions as to what's going on. We're going to get to that in a second. Um, let's see who else is here. Raymond, our favorite baker's in the el house. Panadero con el pan. There you go. Uh, let's see who else. Lisa's excited about Taco Tuesday. Excellent. Uh, good morning, Batos. Buena onda, says Angelica from Canada. I love it. From Canada. I know. It's called Canada. I call it Canada just because it sounds fun. But I shouldn't. You know, here I am telling you guys to call things by their name. And here I am calling Canada, Canada, bad Paco. No more. No more. Uh, let's see. Mary is excited about Taco Tuesday. I am so very happy to hear. Um, boom, ba -dum, boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Morning from Delish Noah's Cafe in Versailles next to Artisan Bakery. It is a great place. We've had, um, uh, we've been to that restaurant. And of course, Noah's Cafe is listed in our Versailles for Foodies map which we're all very familiar with, of course. Uh, let's see. Luna, stop grooming. That is not sporty. <laughs> let's see. Summer is here with us from Pismo Beach. The only reference that I know of Pismo Beach is Bugs Bunny. Um, um, what is it, the line that he says? Here we are, Pismo Beach. 
and not a clam in the house or something like that. I'll have to look the, for the cartoon. Uh, let's see. Clay loves those tacos. That makes two of us. Where are we walking tomorrow? Well, if I told you, Linda, it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? Um, Gary is checking the Lady Profeco video. You know, I thought I would bring that into the news today, but I figured a lady bitching in Mexico because she was not, her prices were not respected in euros, in euros that just seemed too weird for me to, to handle this morning. And I figured we had other good stuff to share with the community. Uh, Scott is enjoying Luna's grooming. I'm glad somebody is. I enjoyed Luna's grooming at four o'clock in the morning when she's like, you know, I don't care if you're sleeping. I'm awake and I have this compelling need to lick your face. And that's what she does. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm pretty much uh, caught up with your early, early comments and so forth and so on. Let's get started with the news. We have a lot of things to unpack today. Okay, so if you are among the seniors that got vaccinated in Puerto Vallarta and are expecting confirmation of your second vaccination date, I have news for you. There isn't one yet. Nope, there isn't one. This is despite the fact that even some of you were told that the second round of vaccines would be applied between March 19 and the 22nd, as in this past weekend. Um, where are the news? We wish we knew. Where are the vaccines? Trust me, as soon as we know, you will be the first to know. Um, but speaking of vaccines, apparently some government officials in Guadalajara forgot to leave their privilege at home when they were busted trying to sneak family members into the vaccine lines in the city. Uh, yesterday, five employees from the State Council for Sports Development were spotted sneaking in family members through a separate entrance in a vaccination spot in Guadalajara. Those around them said no way, and the five aforementioned employees were taken away by the police and are awaiting for due process. As we say in Spanish, no se vale. It's not proper to do that kind of thing. Um, in a recent... Um, Press conference, Mexican, Mexico President Andres Manuel López Obrador admitted that there are still six states in Mexico where there has been next to no uh, advancement or on, on the crackdown in violence. These states are Guanajuato, Baja California, Jalisco, Estado de México, Michoacán, and Chihuahua. These are the states in which 50% of violent crimes take place in the country, according to the president. These are, of course, the states in which the largest number of elements from the country's National Guard and Marines are being deployed to hopefully shift the numbers in the future. Now, what are you doing to get ready for Semana Santa, I wonder? Well, I have done my first round of shopping and I have started to make sure that I have all the elements in the house to be okay with the vacation. I'm planning on staying home most of the time or as much as possible. Meanwhile, Hugo lopez Gatel presented 10 tips, um, what is called a decalogo in Spanish, which is curious because, oh, here I am, back and forth from the news. The word decalogo, which translates to, to oh, here's a word I've never actually said to say, in, have to say in English, Decalogue, I suppose that's how you say it. In English, the word decalogo or decalogue refers primarily to the Ten Commandments. In Spanish, we use it every time there are 10 tips or 10 uh, bits of knowledge that are useful for this, that, and the other. And now, Hugo lopez Gatel has put out 10 tips or a decalogo of um, ideas to uh, consider so that you can have a safe vacation like we're going anywhere anymore. Um, and I'm going to share them with you. Number one, enjoy your upcoming vacation in a place close to home and let it be a vacation, not a celebration. Number two, spend time with your close family circle, avoiding time spent with other circles. Number three, go to places where there are small numbers of people. Number four, if you go to places as a group, Try to keep your group to five people maximum maximum, and in outdoor locations. Number five, try to go out at times in which there are less people around you, like midnight. No, I'm just kidding. Um, number six, have gatherings with friends in limited numbers and with safe distance. 
Number seven, if you participate in religious events, do so from home. Number eight, protect yourself from the heat, wearing light-colored clothes, sunglasses, and drink up eight glasses of water per day or more. Number nine, maintain the basic safe distance measures, such as wearing a face mask and washing, washing your hands frequently with soap and water. Number 10, stay home altogether. Don't go anywhere. Stay home to avoid exposure. Of course, we are all too familiar with these ideas, but it never hurts to share them with you again. Number 11, be nice to Luna because she is an awesome kitty cat, right? Oh, she's gone. See? She's gone. She disappeared. As soon as I decided not to feature her on the screen, Luna says, fuck this. I'm going to go look for better things to do, and that's perfectly fine with me. Let me take a quick look at your comments so far, and then we can continue on with the news, I mean, with the weather and all kinds of other goodies. Let's see what we have. Looking for cues, looking for cues. Hey, Rita, I owe you confirmation for a lunch date. I know that, but I have been busy, but I will get in touch with you guys sometime in the near future, I promise. Uh, let's see who else, what else, what else, who else? Um, Dan, you know, it's, it's, I have to find a way to get myself unbusy early in the morning to go to Artisan Bakery before the broadcast and get some yummy um, croissants early in the day because I know that later on they're gone. So I'll try to do that sometime in the near future. It's so close to my house, so close. Uh, let's see. Ba, ba, dee, ba, boom, ba, boom. Uh, mm. Everybody's talking about croissants. That's wonderful. Um, mm. Everything I read says the longer you wait between the vaccine shots, the better the immunity builds. Some are waiting three to four months between shots. I thank you so much for sharing that, Joe, because I know there must be a lot of fear and uncertainty about, oh, what happens if I don't get my second shot on time? And um, I side with you. I've been reading um, articles here and there that say, if you don't get your second shot immediately, it's not the end of the world. So I'm glad to hear that other people are feeling that way or are reading similar things. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Scott asks, 10 commandments from Bible. Yes, that is correct. Of course, what we talked about has nothing to do with the Bible, and that's perfectly okay, too. So now let us move on to the weather. Boom. Snarky Weather says, today is a perfect day to get into a fist fight with a perfect stranger. I don't think there are perfect strangers out in the world, so that means we shouldn't be getting into fist fights with anybody, or at least that's my take. Uh, the temperature today is 26 degrees right now. It feels like 27. That would be Fahrenheit, uh, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a low humidity day with 30% only. And the weather forecast for today calls for a clear day. High temperature 30, low temperature 16. Tomorrow, Wednesday, clear through the day. Uh, high temperature 29, low temperature 15. And um, on Thursday, we're going to have a partly cloudy day with a high temperature of 29, low temperature 16. Not bad for a March or end of March week. I love it. Uh, let's see what else we have. Question. Do you know the origin of pico de gallo? It translates to beak of the rooster. Why is salsa called that? That is an excellent question, Linda. I don't know the answer, but I you make me curious. I am definitely going to take a quick look at it. Um, Claudia uh, gives a shout out to Au Croissant, which is another great bakery here in Versailles. They are absolutely wonderful as well. Um, yummy, yummy, yummy bread. Um, now, let's take a quick look at some leisurely headlines that I have put aside for for you. But first, let me ask you, did you feel the earth move under your feet? Did you feel the sky stumbling down? Did your heart start to tremble? I ask only because there was an earthquake yesterday here near Puerto Vallarta. I wonder if it was good for you. I didn't feel a thing, but apparently a 4.2 magnitude earthquake was reported yesterday at 1.56 p.m. with an epicenter located 38 kilometers south of Cihuatlan, and Cihuatlan is the last southern municipality in Jalisco before crossing over to the state of Colima. 
Uh, fortunately, no damages were reported. Um, but again, I didn't feel a thing. I think in the 20 years that I've been in Puerto Vallarta, I've felt less than eight or 10 earthquakes in town. I'm usually not paying attention or expecting to feel them. So, and it's a good thing that they're rare around here. Um, moving on, a few, week, a few weeks ago, we reported on several streets being paved in the Aramara neighborhood, and now neighbors are happy to welcome the new paved streets along with other improvements in several public spaces. How nice to see that the municipal government finds ways to deliver improvements to the city. I have friends that have lived in Aramara for years, so I'm aware of how much these new paved streets were needed. The government seems to be using the same type of materials as those used here uh, in Versailles and some of the recently paved streets. So the streets are no longer just cobblestone. It seems to be like a combination of, of, of rocks and pavement. Um, let us hope that they last and let us hope that the city continues to do um, more improvements to that effect. We also reported a few weeks ago um, about this federal law of cinematography being updated in Mexico such that now all films screened in Mexico, regardless of their language, must be screened with Spanish subtitles, including films in Spanish. This is a major advance in human rights as they relate to people with auditory challenges. Film distributors have 60 days to comply. And I wonder, are we going to the movie theaters yet? Probably not so much in my case. It's not the safety issue. It's more the fact that I just haven't seen that many films scheduled lately that interest me. There's a new Pinocchio uh, out there that might be fun. There's a Tom and Jerry that might be fun. But again, I am not, there's not much that I have seen in uh, in, in, in the theaters announced that I want to go see. I wonder if there's anything that you're looking forward to seeing in the theater or if you're going at all. Uh, we did a poll to that effect a few weeks ago and maybe it's time to do it again. And last but not least, and totally unrelated to Puerto Vallarta, I will leave you with an article I found. This is right before we get into Taco Tuesday. An article I found this morning in the New York Times about one of my funny idols, Eddie Izzard the amazing British comedian, actor, writer, activist, and endurance runner, is 56 years of age. And she performs stand-up in English, French, German, and Spanish. She channels 21 different characters in a one-person show of Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. She runs multiple marathons for charity, clocking 32 in 31 days in January, each followed by a comedy routine for her Make Humanity Great campaign, uh, which supports global unity and tolerance. If you're not familiar with the work of Eddie Izzard, she is absolutely amazing. She's a wonderful human being. Let me take a quick look at your comments before we go on with uh, Taco Tuesday. I am so excited for Taco Tuesday. I am this excited for Taco Tuesday. There you go. Like, yum. Anyhow, before we get into Taco Tuesday, let's see... Uh, your last minute uh, porno de pan. Oh, Logan, what are you thinking? Seriously, I love it. Um, still in my sweats, so cold lately. Sweats are sexy. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Arturo says, salsa mexicana, not pico de gallo. Well, you know, pico de gallo, I've heard the expression um, um, in a lot of places, in a lot of contexts. Angelica says, were there boulders falling on the road going to Tuito? I don't know. I didn't see anything reported to that effect. Um, thank you very much for that, um, that article, Joe. I'll take a look at that headline later on, but thank you so much for sharing it with the cluster. Um, Jorge argues that it's called Pico de Gallo in Texas, California, and throughout the United States. But, you know, I've heard it called Pico de Gallo in Mexico City as well. Um uh, hello, Charlie, Pat and Charlie. Welcome to the cluster. Please grab your favorite beverage and hang on and hang out with us. Ask all kinds of questions and so forth. Um, let's see. Uh, ever watch a chicken peck out in the yard looking for food? Is that a hint for Pico de Gallo? Oh, my goodness. I have no idea, but that sounds like a good hint. I love it. Los Gringos decided to call it Pico de Gallo to go along with Cinco de Mayo. That sounds shady. I'm not so sure about that, David. I'd be curious as to where you got that theory. Um, but it sounds cute because it rhymes. 
Pico de Gallo with Cinco de Mayo. I don't think it's related, but um, but now I'm all curious about the whole Pico de Gallo business. Let's see what else we have here. Joey loves Eddie Izzard. Yay. Thank you very much. Um, Susan likes Eddie Izzard. Thank you very much. Why are the fires on the mountain, says Sly? Well, some gardeners put things on fire to better the quality of the earth in which they grow things. Um, either that or people are getting busted for growing pot. I don't know. No, but seriously, a lot of gardeners uh, start fires um, to to better the, the, the land that they use. So that is the best answer that I have. Um... Am I going to do a poll to see how many people would like to get together to celebrate one year of coffee and headlines? Let's do that now. Um, let's see. Hold on just a second. Polls. Let's create a poll. Um, outdoor get together for coffee and headlines. Yes and no. And the question is actually, you know, I'm just writing it really short, but the whole question would be something along the, where did it go? Oh, there it is. The whole question would be something along the lines of, if you are in Puerto Vallarta and we scheduled an outdoor get together in a safe place, like a restaurant, sometime around March 31st, around the afternoon, would you be interested in attending? Again, there is a part of me that would love to celebrate with everyone and anyone. There is a part of me that would love to meet people and, and see you face to face, particularly those of you that have kept us company for such a long time. It's been almost a year. But at the same time, I'm trying to be as mindful and respectful of everybody's um comfort level and um so this is something that has has waited in my mind but looking at wow 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 okay so so far 93 percent of you or 37 would be into a get together that's a lot of people so okay now my mission is going to be to try to find a place where a large number like that can safely get together as you know large get-togethers are still not necessarily a good idea, but uh, let me see what we can do, and we'll certainly try to make this happen. Again, it will probably somewhere around here, Versailles, which seems to be a pretty centric area for many. Um, there's a couple of places that come to mind. Um, let, me, let me get that going. Let me get that going. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what else we have. And, oh, my God, everybody wants to get together. That is so fun. That is so sweet. Let me show you the results. I think they're showing up on your screen, but I'm not closing them yet. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, hey, Kateri, it is great to see you. My friend Kateri, who works at Encanto, is in the house. It is great to see you. What? What's my favorite gay show, asks Dana Douglas. I don't know that I have one. Um, I'm not watching any... Oh, well, of course I'm watching RuPaul's Drag Race because that is a lot of fun to watch. Um, I loved Pose, and uh, it's it's a pretty gay show, although it's a show that everybody should watch because it has to do with humanity more than anything else. Um, but uh, RuPaul's Drag Race is very addictive for me. Let's see. Should the poll apply only to those that can attend? Of course, it should. So if any of you voted yes but are sitting in Milwaukee, um, ew, no, no, this is primarily for people that are in town that are willing and able to attend. Uh, and of course, we will do other get-togethers moving forward as soon as the coast gets clearer. And needless to say, I've been just itching to feel comfortable at a stage so that we can do music appreciation lectures in, in, in person. Um along the lines of what we're doing on, on Music Mondays, but a lot more fun because we can actually play things and listen to things together. Um, 
Rita says, although it would be great to meet everyone, safety should be determined by the number of people who would attend. Absolutely, Rita. Rita. And, and again, the last thing we want to do is to break the many guidelines that we have been mentioning throughout this month. So I'm very, very mindful of that. Um, I'll keep you all posted. Can you film it when you get together for us that are far away? Absolutely. And even we might be able to to go live while we're doing it if there's a good uh, there's good Wi-Fi. Uh, the Botanical Gardens would be awesome, says Wendy. Paco th thinks, I think, that it would be a little bit challenging to get everybody up there. So that's probably not a good suggestion. Uh, John recommends El Rio Barbecue. I think El Rio would be a great place, actually. I had not thought about El Rio. I'll get together with them or mention it to them to see if they're into it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Kateri adds another take on the burning of the hillsides and riverbanks. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, Pat and I are on the same uh, channel, pun intended, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race and Pose. And let's see what else. Another another shout out for the El Rio barbecue. And Dale says, too many mosquito. Uh, you're right, but you know, that's part of the reality of living here, Dale. Um, you know, and for better or for worse, we live in a place where there's a lot of mosquitoes. Um, somebody's saying Langostinos reserve their beach area. That's another possibility. Let me let me let me get to it. And, and we'll make it happen. So I think, I think we are ready for, uh, oh, how about the beach by the ice skating? Hmm, interesting. Okay, I'm going to hold on to all of these. I now want to move to Taco Tuesday because we've been talking about this uh, for such a long time. Taco Tuesday is now a real thing. And just to be on the same place, what is Taco Tuesday? Some of you suggested we go to taco places on Tuesday. I figured my first reaction was like, oh, my God, so much work. What am I going to do and how am I going to make this happen? But then I gave myself a few days to think about this. And I figured this makes perfect sense. Going to explore tacos on to present them on Tuesday, creating a whole new map of taquerias and taco places and taco stands that we have checked out and making that map available to you. Um, the sustaining, uh, supporting members of Copy and Headlines so that you can take a look at all the taqueria places in the same place. So what's going to happen is moving forward every Tuesday, I'm going to tell you about a new taco place or an old taco place that I've discovered. I'm going to tell you why I found it important or interesting or what's the story behind it. And then I'll tell you how the map is going to work. Let me start by saying something that I think is important to be said. I think, and this is my personal opinion, it's very difficult to enjoy a bad taco. You know, tacos are wonderful everywhere and anywhere you go. I mean, there are certain taquerias, for example, um, what is it called? See, the name escapes me right now. But there's that taqueria that serves tacos with, with prime cuts of meat, and that's okay. Um, fancy tacos, but for the most part, tacos are great because they're they're everywhere, and tacos are yummy a lot of times because of the way the meat is cooked. Sometimes it's because uh, the way uh, because of the way a specific salsa is prepared to go along with them. But I've, I've I don't think I've ever had bad tacos. I mean, there are good tacos, there are great tacos, so it's not like these taquerias are going to be better or worse than others. They're simply scattered and located in different parts of the city. So I'm going to start with one that was recommended to me just a few weeks ago, not even two weeks ago, by an acquaintance that happens to live near my house. And he says, have you tried tacos so-and-so? And I said, where are they? And he said, well, there. He gave me the address. And it turns out to be less than two blocks away from my house. So let's jump in and I'm going to show you Tacos Yoli. Oops, I'm blocking my own logo. That's not good. Let me put myself in this lower corner. And I want to tell you about Tacos Yoli. I actually walked past this place not too long ago when I was walking to the Saturday Tianguis. And of course, I walked in, I walked past it during the daytime. They're only open in the evening. And Tacos Yoli has been 
um, managed by Doña Yoli and her husband for over 30 years. They've had this taco stand. They're originally from San Sebastián del Oeste. Moved to Puerto Vallarta to see their... Hold on just a second. Ah, that felt good. They moved to Puerto Vallarta to put their three kids through college, and they put their three kids through college by operating their taco stand. Um, there they are. That's Doña Yoli. That is... Um, her husband, and they serve both uh, tacos de asada and tacos de adobada, but they also serve all the cabeza or the head varieties, you know, tacos that are, you know, in Mexico, the, the most uh, common tacos are the cabeza tacos in which the whole head of the cow is cooked and every single part of it gets um, gets purpose to that, uh, to that effect. Uh, let's see. Here is Doña Yoli. She takes care of the tacos de asada, the tacos de adobada, the quesadillas, while her husband, Don Juan Manuel, looks after the, the tacos de cabeza. As you can see, there is that bulging piece of fabric in front of him. That is the way tacos de cabeza and tortillas are kept warm under it. The, the meat is kept inside along with the tortillas, and they're covered with a layer of plastic and then a layer of fabric. And this keeps the, the meat really, really warm so that you can enjoy them all the time. Uh, again, she's here she is serving some awesome quesadillas with, with meat and with, with beans. And, um, and some of her tacos of asada and adobada garnished with all the usual um, things, which is cilantro and, uh, and, and chopped onions. Um, here she is preparing some quesadillas. Yummy. They were so good. They were so good. And the, here is a, the open side of the tacos de cabeza where you can see that there are different little mounts of meat in different places. So what they usually do, they start cooking all their meat early in the day and they put, you know, maybe these, these may be the lip tacos or the lip, the lip meat. This must may be the tongue meat, you know, the way they usually organize it is in different places. They put the different types of meat that you're going to enjoy. And as soon as you walk in, you say, I want this and that. On the left side, that is Barbarita. Barbarita is their young assistant. She is going to high school right now, and she's working at night to help support her studies. She hopes to go to university and study business administration. Um, and it is, it was, it's was it been a lot of fun. I've gone like three or four times ever since I discovered this place. And it is fun because it is really a community center. A lot of people that are in the community come over, have their tacos, hang out. These are probably people that have been neighbors for many, many years. But also it was nice to see that there are people that drive to see this particular taco stand from places up north. I saw some English speaking folks that were curious about it. So it was a lot of fun to eat. Of course, all the obligatory salsas were there and they're part of what they start cooking every single day. And of course, you know, fresh lime that goes along with the tacos and it is absolutely wonderful. Um, and and again, it it's just Doña Yoli and her husband and Barbarita having a good time welcoming people. And this is what the experience was like for me. Now, let me show you what this is going to look like on our taco map, which is up and running. Let me bring it up on the screen. And uh, there it is. Actually, before, well, no, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so I figured we're going to put together a taco map. And I envision myself or you or anyone looking at your telephone and your 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 or your your portable device and looking at a map and probably what you want to see is not this long long explanation of what the taco stand is about or what the taco place is about so i came up with a format that is a short story condensed so that you can see in a minute and a half what each place looks like and i'm going to show you the one that i put together for uh, Tacos Yoli. Take a look.
So this is how we're going to tell the story of each one of these taco places as we move forward. And now, what is that going to look like on our trusty new map? Let me show it to you. Here is the new uh, Coffee and Headlines Taco Tuesdays uh, map, ta-da. And you will notice how there are some placeholders for other places that have a photo icon. This is because we already know of some taco places that we have discovered in um, in in our Versailles for Foodies places. So I'm going to go back to all these places and take a look at specifically at what their taco offerings are like. But if you take a look at this one down here, this one is the icon for Yoli's Tacos. This is the only one that has the video treatment. So every time you find a place on the map for the, the Taco Tuesday map, each and every one of them will have its own little pointer like here, and you'll be able to click on the video so that you can enjoy this short minute and a half um, presentation. Where is this map? I'm going to put it out today. Of course, it doesn't have many places just yet, uh, but I'm going to make it available today to all of you that are supporting members of Coffee and Headlines, and I hope that more and more of you will choose to support our pursuits because, you know, it takes time and energy and money to go and eat all these tacos. So this is what we can expect to have and look forward to moving forward. Let me take a quick look at your comments and suggestions about tacos just to make sure that you like what we've done. I want to know if you like the format, if you don't like the format, if you want to recommend any kinds of things uh, or taco places that you've enjoyed, so forth and so on. Um, I see more suggestions about outdoor places. Thank you very much. I will take a look at that in um, this afternoon. I meant gay shows in PV, says Dana. Gay shows in PV. Well, um, I don't know that I have any recommendations for you because I don't, I'm not going to shows right now, so I'm not a good person to recommend. Um, but um, if anybody else has seen any good performers in town that are, and if anybody else is feeling comfortable seeing performers in town and want to make some suggestions for Dana, by all means, please go ahead. Michael, I think you would love Tacos Yoli. It was absolutely fantastic. They're open from 7 to midnight every day. Or I'm, they must have a, a, a break day. I'm not sure what is, which one it is, rather. Uh, let's see. Sherry loves traditional tacos. I love traditional tacos, too. Um, Michael says it's always about the salsas. I kind of tend to agree with that because ultimately it is the salsas that give the special flavor to the food. Mm. Jorge chimes in on that. And I, again, it's about the salsas. Um, Arturo, we're going to smack you for that. And we're not going to let that happen. Don't worry, Taco Bell coming to Mexico. I love it. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, don't get me started with Taco Bell jokes. Although I must confess that when I was going to New England Conservatory, in Boston, there was a Taco Bell right across the street, and I was a regular. Never, never, uh, never turned down a good Taco Bell, although I knew that it's not the real thing. Clay asks, what street are Tacos Yoli in? They are in Benemérito de las Américas, 264 in Colonia La Vena. Again, that information is available on the map, as you can see. And for those taco places that also have their own... Um, Facebook page, we're going to include it as well. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, you have nothing to thank me for, then actually for me, it's also a pleasure and an adventure to go and discover new taco places. In fact, I can tell you that tomorrow's Walking Wednesday has a dual purpose to acquaint you with a neighborhood and also for me to go scout a place where I know that there's several taquerias that might be fun, including in the near future. Sherry liked the short video. Thank you very much for that. It really helps me to know that you are enjoying what we're doing. Uh, let's see what else. Christy likes the format as well. Thank you. Um, let's see what else. Um, 
Claude, it's my pleasure. And anytime you want to go exploring tacos with me, just let me know. Um, more kudos from Diane. Thank you, guys. You know, I had been thinking about this for several weeks, and I am just very happy on how this is coming about. Uh, Joey likes the taco map. This is wonderful. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Claudia says, excellent idea for the good taco places and we can help small business and families that have kept working. Absolutely, absolutely. And in this adventure, I'm going to shamelessly favor small taco places and taco stands precisely for that reason. And I'm sure that you, Claudia, along with Carmen, must have some awesome suggestions. I would love to hear from you guys. As you know, in case you don't know, Claudia and Carmen are the owners or were the owners of the legendary Mexican restaurant El Arrayan, which they chose to close last year. And we're all um, itching to learn more about their new adventures. Uh, Claude says, I feel taco time is near after the show. That makes two of us. I made myself hungry just talking about this. Are you sending this new taco map to our emails? Yes, I am, Sherry. You know that all the... Um, all of you that are members and supporting members of uh, of Coffee and Headlines through Buy Me a Coffee, every time we post something on Buy Me a Coffee, it is automatically sent to supporting members. So yes, you will get an email message this afternoon if you are a supporting member so that you can start keeping track of all these taquerias. The map is going to be very exciting once we have a bunch of them on the map. So I'm very excited about that. Um, Matthew offers a suggestion for um, for a place that I'm not familiar with that serves tacos de Caguamanta Stingray. Wow, I'm definitely going to check that out, Matthew. Thank you very much. I know of a taco stand that serves chile relleno tacos, and it's the only stand where I've seen them, and they are delicious. Anyhow, I think we are getting to the end, and I see a lot of... Um, Great suggestions and great comments. Please feature Marisma. Absolutely. Marisma is another great place. Um, uh, let's see what else. Thank you very much for that, Michal. I really appreciate your remarks. Um, let's see. Uh, you can definitely taste the love in some tacos. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Um, question, easy way to join to support you. Piece of cake, all you have to do is go to this website, buymeacoffee.com slash Ojeda Paco. We show it on every, every, every time we get together. We show it. It is in the show notes. It's on the website. It's everywhere. You can support the program by becoming a monthly member or an annual member. It's not expensive to do that. You can buy Luna and I coffees at $3 each. And you can do both if you want, if you're feeling the love and you want to be a supporting member and then you want to buy additional coffees every time you find content that is particularly useful for you, it's it's entirely up to you. It's uh, entirely up to you and it's very much appreciated. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I've been knitting for the first time. When we get together, we'll bring you a hat to keep your head warm, your heat warm, your head warm in the morning. Good job you are doing. Thank you very much, Charlie. You know, I have so much enjoyed my rekindling with crochet and I'm just having a lot of fun with my hook and um, it's a good thing. It's, it relaxes me. Uh, Dave asks, Chile relleno tacos? Yes, absolutely. So anyhow, I am very, very happy to have shared this information with you today. And uh, I'm so excited to, that you are excited about the, the format that we're using for Taco Tuesday. I'm very grateful for your support, as always. And this brings us to an end. Um, today is Tuesday, which means that tomorrow we have Walking Wednesday. I hope your Tuesday is a day full of wonders and a day full of tacos, if you can get to some tacos today. And I hope we get together sometime in the, in the near future, hopefully even tomorrow, between now and the next time we get together. Stay kind, stay happy, stay patient, stay safe, but even better yet, stay in touch. Thank you for joining us today. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you again soon. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.